Today we'll explore a few primitives available in the graph SCAD environment. Uh, right clicking opens a menu and the primitives are in the object so the easiest primitive is the cube so let's click on that and because auto refresh is activated the cube is shown right away now to change the size in X Y and Z and in Canada it's Z so I'm in Canada so X Y and Z I just change the values so we'll just choose 10 and uh, 20 or 20 and 10 again we can uh, choose uh, true for center which will center it from all axis and you can offset by using 10 divided by 2 which is the Z height and divide that by 2 so now uh, all the uh, the shape is over the zero alright so that's easy enough let's move it aside um, in open SCAD and um, graph SCAD you can if you press on the uh, cursor keys up cursor keys the values do change dynamically so to move it aside we can press on the cursor keys and that will move one millimeter at a time it's not the fastest thing but if you're if you're trying to uh, put uh, two things together and just fiddle around with it this is a good way to do it okay so now the cube is done let's try another one and what comes next is of course the cylinder so the cylinder has the top radius we'll choose a value of 5 and it does have the bottom radius if you don't choose the bottom radius then the bottom is going to be the same as the as the top uh, we'll choose the height to be uh, 20 and this you can choose the um, how many faces you have so there is a default in the machine I don't recall what it was but we'll choose 50 for now um, the higher this value is the slower the computations become so if you want to keep a responsive system then you can keep it lower okay so we have a cylinder and the cylinder this is a center false we can choose center true uh, center false makes it centered uh, the, the circle of the cylinder is centered but the height is over the zero so if we choose center here true then everything is going to be above uh, all, all the axes are going to be centered okay so let's move this aside <laughs> let's choose another primitive um, I, I've deliberately skipped the box and the empty cube what now would be a good time to choose it so the box is is a cube that's empty 
um, choose a bigger size. So 10 again by 10. And the height would be make it seven. And the thickness of the walls, if you're 3D printing, you might want a decent thickness. I'm not sure. Uh, so we'll choose one here. And the rounding is just that. If you increase it, then everything's going to be rounder. And the interior height, I'm not sure what it is. I believe it is, let's see. I believe it's the how thick the bottom is. So we'll choose that to be uh, three. Yeah. That's the interior height and if you want the corners to be nice and round you can choose, choose the FN to be 30. There you go. And the more you choose, the more you increase the FNs, the more they're going to be rounded. Now, there's a few things coming out here. A few things you can connect to. This is the inner object, the outer object, and the object. Hey, what's that for? Well, we can keep it for another, another day. It's just a... Uh, Th these things give you like the inner object is the inside here uh, so if you want to use the inside let's say for something that connects together then these become very useful okay so we'll just move this aside Let's choose another one, which is the empty cube. Oh, it doesn't look very empty now. Let's try... Um, Okay, so I guess that to find out if it's really empty, we would need to subtract uh, subtract it from something else. So let's see if we can use a boolean operator on it. Operation boolean object is here. The first object is here. We're on the difference, and uh, we'll choose the cylinder as a second object. And yeah, the cube appears to be empty. Let's just remove the other ones here. So yeah, it's just a shell. I haven't used this, and uh, I'm not sure of what I could use it for. It's just a box within a box. But uh, obviously, it's a primitive that could save a lot of work if you use a lot of empty boxes. Okay. Let's try another one. Well, empty sphere, I 
like I'm guessing is the exact same. Right, so we have a sphere here. And let's cut it out. The thickness will make the thickness to be uh, one, one millimeter. And I'll choose a cylinder. Cylinder of radius five with a height of thirty, yes. Center true. And subtract one another with the Boolean expression. So operation, Boolean. We'll use a difference operation and yeah, it's empty. Oh this would like be an empty bead now. Alright, so that's the empty sphere. Let's try another one. Up next is the gear and the gear rack. So let's see what we can do with that. Okay, these are all gear parameters. How many millimeters per tooth? How many number of teeth? Uh, the number of teeth, the thickness. Well, the thickness. We all know what this is. That we take a make a thick gear. Um, hold center diameter. Um, twist factor. Well, that's. I guess, but doesn't appear to be doing anything. I guess we won't twist it. Uh, slices, I'm not sure what that does. Apparently, nothing in this mode. Teeth to hide. Okay. Uh, pressure angle, well that's the shape of the tooth. It change the pressure angle changes the the shape of the tooth. So you really have to verify with your gear what the pressure angle would be. Um, clearance, backlash, these are all things that the gears um, the parameters of the gears so if you don't know what these are then you really need to look up how gears work um, so it makes it easy to make gears and um, because of that uh, could be very practical to make, uh, for example, compound gear. So let's make another gear. Copy. We'll choose the same gear pitch and everything, but just m more teeth and the thickness to be five or two, three, three millimeter. And we'll choose more teeth. So this just makes a, and if, and if I was to um, make these two, fuse these two uh, objects together, then of course I would have only one compound gear. And this could be uh, 3D printed as a reduction gear. So uh, one gear turns faster and the other one turns smaller, or a multiplication gear. Okay, so that's the gears.
Oh, the gear rack. Well, same thing as the gears. So you do need to know your your pitch, how many um, millimeters per tooth, and uh, how many teeth that you would want. Uh, thickness, same as the gears. Uh, the height, I'm supposing that's that. And pressure angle has to do with the gear. So if you're if your gear earlier, the pressure angle was 28, well, you need the rack to be 28 as well. Okay, so that's that for the gears. And let's see, object hex grid, I'm not sure what it is, so we'll get to it later. Uh, use the pulley. Um, so the pulley, you need to know what belt you're using. Um, all the popular ones are here. Each belt has a different pro profile. So on AliExpress or eBay, you can order like the GT2 or the G GT2 three millimeters and, and two millimeters. So the gear has this different profile. Um, so the number of teeth is really has to do with the belts so you need to know your belts if you don't know your belt you're just guessing so that's very useful I've made quite a few pulleys with that um, compound pulleys as well to uh, do uh, pulley reduction Let's try um, metric thread. Now the metric th thread, I, like I really can't see unless we were making 3D printing. I, I can't really see what this would be used for, uh, you know. Uh, you have to ma match it with a matching nuts so this really is a little awkward you can use it and subtract it into something else um, and make the master so it's available if you need it of course it's there um, operation The round cube, well, let's make it 10 and 10 and 5. So the cube has uh, rounded corners, and the rounding uh, is here. So let's try 0 0.5 and if you choose a lower number here it's going to change the bevel so let's choose two okay, two doesn't do anything it, it rounds a few squares let's try three let's try four okay so four makes a little bevel let's try five Okay, five makes a bevel up and down. So, yeah, you can choose. You can change this to change your bevel, and if you really want rounded corners, then you could use uh, thirty, or very smooth, or even fifty, or a very very smooth box object. Okay, so moving on. Uh, we haven't tried the sphere. We have made the sphere in another video. So here it is. Uh, same thing. Radius. Choose 10. That makes it big. And yeah, nothing special about the sphere. It's um, about as spherical as it gets. Okay, so let's move on and use a tube.
so the tube is well I guess basically a ring so thickness yeah so the heights So the tube is basically a cylinder um, subtracted by another cylinder inside. Practical if you need a ring type object, but you can still make it with the uh, the other uh, the, the other primitive, which is a cylinder. All right, so uh, I'll check out the ones that I don't know, and I will get back to you. So please uh, subscribe. Thank you. There are more videos to come, so please subscribe.